But instead, I'll be standing in for her today as she's on a well-deserved vacation. Uh, I am Joshua Davis, a.k.a. Grouch, and you're probably more familiar with me with a show from, uh, called Ready Up. Uh, anyways, if you guys have been keeping an eye on GuildWars2.com this week, you're probably relatively aware that we've been talking about guilds this week and all of the features that are going to affect the guilds in some sort with Heart of Thorns. Um, guilds are a fundamental part of Guild Wars 2, obviously, and uh, one of the major goals with Heart of Thorns is to improve that functionality and to make that much more of an engaging experience. Uh, on today's show, uh, we actually got a clip about 24 minutes long with Link Hughes and Ruby Bayer describing uh, kind of uh, an, in, an in-depth, in-game uh, preview of Guild Halls and what all those features will entail. And then we'll follow that up with uh, John Peters and Jessica Bodiger and myself, and we'll be talking about uh, Guild Claiming, which is a primarily Wolves' World feature. We'll be talking about guild teams, and we'll actually be showing off the uh, guild arena where you and your guild can skirmish and uh, have fun in a PvP sense inside your guild hall. Uh, now, before we get into that, uh, I kind of want to just outline some of the six tenets or kind of the fundamental guiding principles for guild halls, and uh, that's kind of led the team as they've been developing the features. And uh, if you read the blogs from uh, Link Hughes, you're probably familiar with this from the Welcome to Guild Halls post that he uh, came out with originally. Um, so first of all, it's uh, emphasizing community and fellowship. Um, as you know, playing uh, games with friends is much more engaging uh, than just playing by yourself. So we really want to embrace that and make that more of a thing. Um, also giving players a place to call their own within Tyria. Um, I mean, what can be better than knowing that you have a place to go to inside the game that is really just for you and your friends? Uh, the third one is uh, allowing players to build a shared history that really reflects how you and your guild have grown as time has gone on. Uh, fourth is bringing guilds more into the world and uh, basically making guilds more of a presence within that world. Uh, right now you have your, your guild tag, and that really kind of embodies what you are and like how you are as a player, but we want to make that even more visible as you play in the game. And we'll describe how we're doing that a little bit uh, later on in the show. Um, fifth, providing a platform for guilds to express their creativity. Uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff in guild halls that we'll be showing off today. Um, basically, the obstacle system that we'll show you off in the guild arena is a prime example of this, but basically allowing guilds to kind of customize their guild hall to be an expression of their guild and what they're all about. And uh, lastly, and most importantly, probably, is creating a, uh, new ways for guilds to play together. And again, um, today's show will really be a testament to what we're be, uh, you know, what that's all about. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to bring on Link Hughes and Ruby, who've done a pre-recorded segment for us. And they're going to be walking you through the very first guild hall we're showing off, which is going to be uh, Gilded Hollows. Thanks for watching, guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching Points of Interest. Um, thanks for hanging out with Josh for a little while. I am on vacation this week. I think I'm probably whale watching or something while you are hanging out and watching this live. So thank you for Josh for sitting in. Um, right now I am pre-recording this. I want to thank Link, our game designer, for coming and doing some pre-recording with me. Uh, we're going to take a look at guild halls. I know you guys have been waiting all week and I know you've been watching and reading some guild posts by Link. So thank you for doing a ton of writing. Uh, my pleasure. And now you get to show off what you guys have been working on. So let's yeah. do it. I'm super happy to get the word out. Uh, All right. So what are we going to see first? We are in the guild hall, and this is freaking enormous. Uh, yeah. So I'm this like is... frantically panning around because I don't know where to look first. <laughs> uh, this is the Gilded Hollow. It's one of the two guild halls that we're going to be shipping with. Um, and it is Titanic. Um, yeah. This is this really long, if you want to follow me. I'm coming. There's just <laughs> a lot. Of, I'm working on it, but look at this. That's fair. Have yeah. you seen this? I have, in fact. <laughs> okay, just checking. It's enormous. All oh, right. yeah, no. I, Here we go. You don't even know. Uh, Jesse, our map artist, has just absolutely knocked these maps out of the what park. All right. Um, coming, coming, coming. I, you're, yeah, first person view is a good way to, to experience the guild halls. Look at this little um, tunnel down here, oh my gosh. I'm going to go slow and stop and pan around. So that's fair. As you can see. So the Gilded Hollow has this very, like, jungly kind of, uh, I, I don't know, this, this opening uh, entryway reminds me of sort of like a lost, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, or like, um, actually not at all Raiders of the Lost Ark considering that, that happened in the desert, as I think about it. Okay. The whole Gilded Hollow is this sort of ruined outpost um, underneath the jungle. Um, when we get to the main plaza, you'll actually see that, that it's beneath this, like, giant fissure. Um, Jesse used uh, a number of different caves as, as inspirations, but one, I believe it's called Hung Sam Doom. I apologize to everyone uh, who speaks Korean, I believe it's Korean, that I just hideously mispronounced. 
Um, but it's one of the largest caves in the world. It's so large that it actually has its own underground jungle. Um, because of this giant sinkhole in the ceiling um, that brought down enough water and sunlight that plants could grow. Wow. Um, oh, my gosh. Yes. So That is incredibly shiny. Uh, the whole thing is kind of carved out of these giant chunks Back of off. gold. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Zoom in as you come up those stairs, though. Like, this, this view is just magnifico. And the whole thing is just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, so this is um, one of the things, right? Like, we've sort of emphasized this. Um, the guild halls in Guild Wars 1 were um, good size, but relatively small. And, of course, everything was outside. Um, in Guild Wars 2, um, we wanted to take the concept of guild hall and go a lot further. Um, so a lot of other games that we looked at that had, you know, guild housing type features... Um, give you kind of a, a building and sometimes a really large building or kind of like a complex um, but we just wanted to go further um, and we decided to put these guild halls in the world not in the mists um, so they're really part of the story of the expansion um, and then uh, we just went crazy with them and they're gigantic they're so large honestly <laughs> that um, I keep finding new little details like every now and then oh I'll just gosh. run around and explore and I keep finding, like, hidden nooks and crannies. Um, and, uh, yeah, they're just Oh, my stunning. word. So this is kind of the main plaza that you're running through now. And uh, did you look up at the beautiful... I did. I panned in there? and panned up, like you said. Nice. And I'm so, I feel like I'm, like, frantically whipping the camera around, and I really do apologize. I am trying to see everything at once. <laughs> Well, there'll be plenty of time once Card of Thrones yeah. comes out to experiment. Uh, once you have your guild hall, Look. it's cool. You can take your time. All right. Check um, out the ruins. Build buildings. Build buildings? Uh, yes. What? You can build um, buildings. So here we are in the tavern, and as you can see, it's this kind of, like, uh, temporary setup. Um, and uh, here's some of the proprietors. So each of the buildings has its own proprietor who has uh, a series of upgrades associated with them. I'll tell you what, Ruby, why don't you get back out to like a wide view of it? Okay. Um, because I'm going to go ahead and kick off um, completing the building of your guild tavern. Okay, how's this? Is this good? Further. Seriously, keep going? Uh, a little further. Okay, and I'm not just messing around. All right. I yep. nope, am that'll be kind good. of worried. Oh no, it's it's big. Um, so do uh, it. here we go. Get ready. All right, here we go. Pretty cool as it is. Uh, it is pretty cool, but it gets give us more. Way cooler. That that is not better. Patience. Oh. Patience. Oh my gosh. Be ready to pan. It's gonna go. Oh, 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 so cool. And that is your completed tavern. That is quite a tavern. Come on in. I think I will. I like how the bartender went on in. He's, he knows what's up. Yeah, it's one thing we're doing with the guild halls. Uh, uh, it's so cool. Welcome to the guild tavern, or the gilded hollow tavern, anyway. That is um, amazing. <gasps> Check it out. There's a little... Tables and yeah. Okay, wait, wait. Let's, let's go over here by a table. Okay, uh, let's toast to a tavern. <gasps> Cheers. Uh, oh man, I can't get this logo side out. Cheers. Nice. Brought to you by Mordemoth. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that was awesome. High five. Um, that is beautiful. Absolutely. This is fantastic. The art. So pretty. The art Thank you. Uh, let's let's go do another one. Um, Thank you, map artists. Yes. Let's give me just a sec. Let's kind of peek around in here a oh, little fair bit. Enough. I tell you what, I'll go over and get in position. You okay. can just TTF to me when you're ready. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> and everybody can get a little look around here. I like the rugs. So beautiful. Yep. It all is. Oh my gosh. Just everything. There's so many places in this map where you like 
it's like it's a screenshot if you stop moving your camera. Mm -hmm. um, like some touched up thing, but no, it's actually the game. Yep, this um, is just what it looks like. <laughs> so look that way. Um, that's back where we came in, right? Like that's the other side of this giant Excuse aquifer me. that the, the Gilded Hollow sits on. Okay. Um, so like if you pan right, you'll see like it's just this massive body of water. Um, yep. Kind of this underground lake that the that the Gilded Hollow is atop. And then back up this way. Such gilding. <laughs> Such hollow. Um, so shiny. Yeah, man. So much gold. So, so much gold. Um, that ruined set of giant pillars that you're looking at, that is one of the other guild buildings, the workshop. Uh oh, wait, where'd you go? Up there, and yep, keep going to your right. I'm just over to the right. Hey, dude. There's Nasara in our guild hall. Mm -hmm. in yeah, there's this whole organization, mm -hmm. right? The Guild Initiative. That is kind of like a booster organization mm -hmm. for guilds, um, and uh, with the Pact Fleet in tatters, um, the guild initiative has been founded as kind of the world government's way of continuing to deal with the dragon threat because okay. lacking an airship fleet, that has not made the Elder Dragons go away. And so the guild initiative wants to sign you up and help you as a guild go out and make Tyria a better place, fight the dragon threat. Um, and so the guild halls are actually these places that are of strategic importance to Mordromoth. They were absolutely infested with uh, Mordrum until you clear them out and uh, sort of cut off cool. Mordromoth's influence um, to this place. And uh, once that happens, it's now yours. And the agreement that the guild initiative has sort of brokered for you is that this place is wholly yours as long as you are willing to settle it and hold it against the dragons from recapture. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Right on. So uh, the workshop uh, over here, this kind of, again, ruined, uh, yeah, this way, uh, this ruined uh, set of pillars and things um, is the home of the new crafting discipline that is guild-specific, <coughs> scribing. Um, <laughs> I know you're super excited about scrapping. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Um, so you should get a good a good view because I'm going to build the workshop now. Okay. Uh, you're looking at the temporary structure, but the actual structure is to your left. That one. All right, I'm going to do this thing. Let's do Whoa! it. Whoa! And it begins. I cannot tell you how much I love the building animation. Hi, my pretties, fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look. Again, they just knocked it out. And like so gorgeous. When I thought workshop, Waterfall. right? Like when I asked for like we need this workshop building from the artists, they were like, "Cool. Yeah, we'll totally make that." And I thought it'll be like a barn with like some crafting stations in it. And they said, great. "Ha, that's adorable." It's a funny thing I've learned about working with artists here at ArenaNet is they refuse to make anything that doesn't look amazing. Right? And so you have these like visions in your head of like, "Oh, there'll be like a basic version of something." And it'll just be really simple. And then they give you this, like, absolutely stunning thing. And, yeah, it's been fantastic. Wait so that's a scribing station. I didn't station. notice this last night. Oh, the crazy, like, magical ticker tape? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, my gosh. That's gorgeous. They are. They're so good. <laughs> uh, Hello. So, like, lots of your guildies can come in here and oh, everybody yeah. gets one. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can use any of them, just like a normal crafting station, yeah. right? This is a cool thing that uh, my programmer, Seth, just hooked up. Okay, I think... Yes, there we go. What? What is that? That is I mean, the it's cool, but... ...etheric assembly device. It is the thing that allows your guild to turn um, sort of magical inscriptions... Uh, or inscription is the wrong word we use that elsewhere... Uh, magical schematics, like these sort of magical diagrams and incantations, into um, usable tools for your guild wow. um, by, uh, by assembling like raw ether into these, these tools. And so Amazing. this is the place where that happens. This is kind of the device that makes that work. And so one of the big things about scribing is that while there are some personal items for you to make, 
um, the majority of things that you craft with it are these schematics, which when you craft them don't go into your inventory. They go into this device um, and are there for your guild to, um, to, to assemble. That is extremely cool. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. Actually, so we're about to go into... Uh, <laughs> we're about to go into the, uh, into the uh, arena... Or we're going to build the arena and then just take a quick look at it. Uh, I think Josh and John are actually going to explore yep. the arena in the Lost Precipice, our other map. Um, you guys are going to see that live pretty soon, if you haven't already. I may have just dictated the order of this presentation. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, fair. The, uh, I will say the, the Gilded Hollow is like this symphony of um, just lush, beautiful exploration so spaces. Mm -hmm. um, the Gilded Hollow has a lot of sort of like interesting, mysterious spaces to discover. The Lost Precipice is like an ode to cliff diving and gliding. I'm so glad we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I don't have a UI. Gliding is harder. Uh, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. That is my excuse for evermore. But let's take a moment to um, talk about new guild armor and guild weapons. Yes. This is uh, <laughs> the new uh, guild armor set. This is the Beerstein set. Yeah, right. Uh, come back. Come back. Wait, Link. Come back. Holy crap. Put it away. Um, so this is the heavy set, and I know that you're wearing <coughs> the... Uh, <laughs> most hilarious bug You guys, ever. this has been going on for like two days now. <laughs> yep. It's, uh, the great sword is real. All it's right. true. I just but, I can't put it away. Uh, and I just love it. I love my great sword. But you know what? <laughs> but you know what? Now we can like really get a good look at it. That's fair. So um, we're also introducing a new tier of guild weapons, and the uh, the new tier actually comes in two versions. So this is the Tenebris Thanks, version. That's awesome. Um, and each of the versions of the guild weapons is um, tied to one of the two guild maps. You'll be able to get a resource that you need to craft it mm -hmm. from that guild map. Um, so if you want to craft both, you'll need to either have multiple guilds that have different guild halls or go visit a friend's guild hall and help them out there. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the Tenebris weapons, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, equip a couple more. Let's see. Okay. This is the sword and shield. Okay, let me come over here and I'll take a peek at the shield. The shield is really cool. Oh, the shield is amazing. Yep. And you can kind of see on the sword there that the Tenebris versions actually like do have some like shadow particles bleeding off them, mm -hmm. but mostly they're just kind of um, translucent. Yeah, uh, or that transparent. Looks great. Translucent is maybe the wrong word. That uh, is incredibly cool. I love it. Right on. Thank you so much to our amazing art modelers. And yeah, you guys artists and did a fantastic artists. job. So You've got some cool stuff, too. Yeah. Um, why don't you kill your UI? Okay. I will kill my UI. Show me off. Uh, so that's the sword and pistol uh, of the Shimmering set, which yeah. is the version that you'll be able to build with the material from the Lost Precipice. Um, do you want to switch to uh, a couple others? Yeah. I do. I'm so in love with the pistol that I just that's keep fair, the pistol eyeballing it. Let's see what else I have here. cool. I've got an axe, and that's the focus? Yes. Nice. Yeah, axe and focus. Or, I'm sorry, scepter and focus. It just oh. is kind of axe-shaped. That's fair. It's, I don't know. I was like, Link will know. I'll just start <laughs> equipping things. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the shimmering versions um, are opaque, but they have this kind of cool ooh, staff. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. They have this cool sort of like, um, uh, almost like rippled water effect, um, sort of slowly moving across Absolutely them. Absolutely gorgeous. I think they're gorgeous. Let's see what um, else they have. Uh, everyone loves a great sword. Great sword. Which shows off this effect to maximum degree. Right? The Well, I think we just have, like, the most surface area here. But yeah, it's fair. Yeah, I love the great sword, and you'll notice that I dyed my armor to match as best I could. <laughs> How uh, very coordinated of you. I like your description of my characters. Would you call it early 90s paladin? Uh, yeah, late 80s, early 90s. Late 80s, early like 90s paladin. Fantasy paladin. Fancy paladin. I wonder if that character name's taken. It is now that I've said it. Fair. Yep. <laughs> she is. She's a fancy paladin. Race to the top. Ransom the name to Ruby. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. So let's go ahead and um, build the arena. So you're going to want a really wide angle on this one. Okay. 
Uh, so the arena is to your right, to your right, see. to your other right. Now to your left. You've gone far enough that left came right. Okay, I'm looking at this thing with the blue and red banners. So that's that's the temporary structure. When you start building uh, one of the buildings, there's like a temporary structure that goes up that um, you can go ahead and start unlocking some of the upgrades and things associated with that building. But when the final building gets completed, that's the is one the you scaffolding? Want. Yeah, okay. Okay, don't get too close because this is going immense. to punch you in the eye. Yep, it's pretty big. Oh, wait. So must turn on you eye. There's our little temporary building, and so here let's this go scaffolding. Ahead and here we go. And you can just see me there in the corner as um, scale. <laughs> Link for scale. Yep. And yep. Whoa! Oh, yeah. It just keeps going. Oh my gosh. Let's go take a look up there. Come on up. Oh man. Let's see. Nice. That's where you can go in. You can team switch. Well, I'll let them talk about it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I know it's hard not to just forget but over everything. The cool thing about the uh, Gilded Hollow Arena is that it makes for a lovely launching point. Darn it. For. All right. Let's see if I can. For <sighs> tours. Okay, so let's go over here. We're going to glide across the crystal chamber. You can see it down there if you look down. You know, I wouldn't jump off the edge of a cliff for just anybody. <laughs> oh, holy crap. Yeah, you this, see the crystal guys. down there? It's so beautiful. Yeah, let's, I do want to talk about the crystal, so it's Oh, we can go ahead and glide down there. So, okay. All right, so I jump. So jump and press, press and hold space. And then you can let go once you, like, there you go. You did it. Oh, I God, didn't touch anything. Don't press space again. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Hold on. I just saw it happen. The glider opened, and I hadn't touched anything yet. That's because, yeah. So watch. Watch me do it. Ready? Um, and it's probably easier in third person. So I'm going to press forward and press and hold space. Here we go. Forward and press and hold space. And then just look. It's just happening. You don't have to press anything else. And you could be like, I want to lose altitude rapidly. Oh, God. I'm going to die. No, but I'm gliding. I'm gliding. And then I make a perfect landing. <laughs> I'll look at that later because I am convinced that I didn't press space in the first place. Fair. I'm going to zoom in here. That's weird. So, okay, so this is one of those places that I feel is like, looks like a painting, but it's just live in our game. Right here. The, uh, the crystal for the Gilded Hollow is oh just... Oh my gosh. It's gorgeous. So gorgeous. So the crystal is kind of the heart of your guild. Okay. Um, it's the thing that you're sort of fighting your way towards um, when you're trying to claim mm -hmm. the map and clear, uh, clear it of Mordremoth's influence. And, um, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it right now. We, yeah, yeah, let's not let's tell too many secrets. Fair. Um, it's sad that the nature of Guild Story is that it is um, one big massive spoiler because, like, hey, you're going to get a guild hall, and here's the terrible plot twist. <laughs> uh, but it's all good. There's a lot of really neat stuff for you guys to discover. I mean, that's, oh, the, that's the best thing about all of this, is that we're just giving you guys the little beginning. We're just giving you guys part of this. Yes. I mean... This is hard. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um... And yeah, let's, let's we'll just say that. Uh, let's show one more thing, and okay. then we'll go ahead and return, uh, turn it back over to Josh and John. John. So this <gasps> crazy, lovely thing is the guild portal. And oh, that was that thing you said we weren't going to touch. Oh no, no, we can touch this. Um, so. Uh, this allows you to fast travel to a number of locations, um, but one of the cool things about it is that, um, oh, my UI is off. Uh, here we go. Um, one of the things you can do is not just fast travel yourself, but open a portal for a whole group of your guildies to go through. Nice. And anybody who touches the portal while it's up will travel just like this. Bloop. Join me. Come. Go to Where's my Archer. Go. Go. Mine's Arch. Go, go, go. Quick, quick, quick. Go, go, go. Thank you so I much like for it. having me on the show, Ruby. <laughs> and uh, That was awesome. It's been a blast. And can't wait to show all of you the amazing magic that is the guild system, guild halls, everything it entails. Um, read blogs. 
uh, talk on forums and uh, play Guild Wars 2 please yeah join us in game cheers cheers Hey guys, welcome back. Hopefully you enjoyed that little presentation there from uh, Ruby and Link detailing uh, guild halls and a lot of the systems that are involved in that. Uh, I'm now joined by John Peters, you guys are very familiar with, and hey. Jessica Bodiger, you guys are also familiar with. Uh, John Peters is the uh, design lead that is uh, kind of giving guidance on the guild halls team, or kind of the guild team in general, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jessica Bodiger is obviously the uh, competitive QA, for, well, she's a QA for the competitive team, so has her hands in literally everything that uh, we put out from Morbus's World and PvP. This is true. Um, so uh, one thing that uh, Link and Ruby did not touch on in the video there was Guild Arenas. And we're going to jump into that so now. So you're suggesting that there are things that are connected between competitive <clears throat> and guild halls. I'm saying you could probably punch people in the face inside of your guild hall. Oh. Um, but fine, uh, more to that point, we'll be jumping into Guild Arenas first. Um, and then we'll be moving on to uh, Guild Claiming, which actually has not been detailed in a blog yet, but this is a World vs. World system that uh, works with your War Room, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then uh, we'll also be talking about uh, what are we called Guild Teams, which is a way for you and your guild to uh, kind of gain prestige and move up the ladder with a uh, five in 5 versus 5 structured PvP. Yep. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into the video for uh, Guild Arenas here now. And John, if you could just kind of walk us yeah. through what's going on here. Um, I mean... One of the buildings, I think the blog for the buildings came out. So one of the buildings is the arena, um, and what what we call what we like to call this is brawling. Um, you basically can go here and fight other players um, in your guild. You could invite people from other guilds into your uh, guild hall and fight them as well. Um, you can see sort of the beginnings of this. There are a number of teams you can there are three set teams which are a blue and a red and a green people might be familiar with those colors <laughs> and then uh, there is on top of that um, a free-for-all team because you might just want to kill everyone um, so that's the idea you can put decorations in here you can see right now one of the programmers for this team he kind of was running the decoration stuff as people were going on you can see people just fighting and on the fly, you can add decorations just to kind of mess with people. It's obviously a permission thing, so not everyone can do it. Some of the things are turrets. Some of the things are well, there's different know, kinds minus, of turrets, like, right? Yeah, different kinds of turrets. And they're not, they're not the turrets you think of. Like he placed one down just now, right? Yes. Um, so it's like ones I think that do healing, some just do straight damage. Yeah. I mean, and that's the kind of thing that like is gonna grow. It's a set of things that we can kind of keep making, keep making cool and keep adding stuff to. Um, you can see these these are you know actual line of sight pillars. He's now removing them so that. You can kind of do that on the fly, too, in case you want to really troll people that are fighting each other. Um, but, yeah. Um, so it's basically a combat sandbox where you can kind of make your own Yeah, make your own combat game sandbox. Awesome. Do, do stuff. Do make, you could have one person on red, green, and blue, and one person on the free-for-all team who can kill all of them. Yeah, right? that's true. Um, you know, basically or, limited by uh, your imagination, essentially. Yes. That's the goal, anyway. Um, the goal, and as you can see, Josh makes... Sure, I was going to say this. Like, you can see that there's a place where you might fall off, uh, <laughs> Skyhammer style. Um, that's a thing that you can turn on and off. So, you know, don't yeah. fear. Not every map will be dominated by guardians with hammers. Yeah. So, like the right there on the right side, there you can see that that is actually able to be turned on and off. And there's also a barrier that prevents people from jumping over the ledge into the arena as well, right? Yeah. So basically, to enter, you have to. Make an, you have to talk to a guy and basically say, I'm going in on this team. Um, so people can't just like jump in there and run around. Like, but you could of, have spectators. But yeah, people can stand. <clears throat> anyone else in the guild call can kind of like stand around like the, around the whole edge of the thing and just watch as the fights are going on. Super fun. I remember the first time we like got this up and someone was like trying to show us the decorations. I'm like, get that out of my way. I'm trying to kill Izzy. <laughs> right? And it was like... Excellent. So, uh, so yeah. one thing that uh, I think is important to mention is that uh, the limits on team size here, um, or like basically what's possible inside this yeah. arena. Yeah. Um, it's pretty big. I think it's basically limited to what feels comfortable in there. You know, this is like a map, so it can have like the amount of people that are in a map. Um, and how many people we're going to let actually brawl, I think there's still some flux going on, but. It's big, you know, like, they, you, you guys did this the other day, this uh, video where I think it was, like, maybe 8 to 12 of you or something like that, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we, you could do it with, like, 20, 
30 people for sure. So. Yep. And then you could have even more um, than that. And again, just to reiterate, actually, that number is in flux. It still it sounds like. Yeah. Um, but the number of players that can even be spectating or in there at any time is even higher than that. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot. You know, in the actual guild hall, it's like you know, over 100 uh, for sure. And you know, the way they work is they kind of like as people are coming, like it'll grow your hall for you, and people can come in, and then you can have tons of people watching and some amount of people playing. And I think we sort of just talked about that. So. Uh, so you talked about some other uh, the obstacles that are in there. So there was the turrets you mentioned. Uh, there's a lot of uh, actual terrain obstacles that you can put on the uh, on the ground here. Uh, I believe there's also things like uh, like lava pools. Yeah, there's all. I mean, sort of. So far, everything that we could have imagined, or a lot of what we could have imagined. But like this is again, like I think they'll grow. There's like you know lava pools that do damage. There's turrets. There's pillars. And, there, and there's there's just sort of variety of stuff. And the more stuff that you know, this is a system that's expandable. Like. In the way that all our other Heart and Thorn stuff is about, like, setting foundation, like, guild halls is about setting the foundation for your guild. Like, we want to add more stuff to the arena. We want to, it's always going to be growing, right? That's the idea. So, yeah. So, uh, I think Jessica said it the best earlier, is that this is kind of just a sandbox. Yeah. Um, players can make it what they want, whether you want to be 1v1-ing in here, if you yeah. want to do 1v1v1. Yep. Uh, if you want to do... Yeah, someone just said 1v3v1. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> or 1v1, v1, 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 like, you know, 20 people just like last man standing. That'd be like, uh, what the hell What the hell is that show called? With uh, They all run out the stuff in the middle at the beginning. Hunger Games. Hunger Games, yeah, it could be Hunger Games. <laughs> Why can I not think of that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, anyways, so there's a lot of stuff that people can do, and uh, excited to see what uh, people actually brainstorm and come up with. Yeah. All right. Um, and so, actually, a quick note here um, there is, uh, as mentioned in the blog, there are two. Uh, there are currently two guild halls. They're gonna be going out with yeah. Heart of Thorns. Uh, we're only showing off one today. Yeah. So they were talking about the other one in their live stream. Yeah. That I was watching, and we're actually st not showing it. We're showing the arena from the same, the Gilded Hollow yeah. that they were showing. Um, so yeah. There is a second one, which is also really cool. This is a quick note there. Uh, yeah. So uh, all right. So moving on from that, we also have uh, PvP guild teams. And I think this is a bit more of your wheelhouse, Jessica, if you want to talk about that a little bit and kind of what the feature is. Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm especially excited about this because uh, basically players are going to be able to create rosters um, underneath their guild banner and represent their guild in structured PvP game modes like Conquest uh, and then Stronghold once we release that with Heart of Thorns. So I think it's going to give um, guilds the opportunity to kind of put forth uh, the best of the best and... Um, we're going to have a guild leader board that you'll be able to see how you rank up against other guild teams and basically just make a name for yourself and, you know, potentially aspire to, to get into some of our more hardcore tournaments like WTS. And So yeah. I, think, I think it's a good tool to help uh, players organize and um, just kind of gain a reputation yep. in PvP. Yep. Yeah, and I'll say, too, like there's the whole... Uh, that speaking of, like, I like to at least say this all the time, like the foundation, right? Like Yeah. Guild teams <clears throat> means that, like, we can have teams for more than PvP at some point. It means that we can have, like, what can we do? What can you do with a team in PvP? It's like, this is, like, the step of, like, okay, now we have teams. Now we can have leaderboards. Like, what are the things we can do with teams? Um, I think like, in teams could, I think, to dig, to dig deeper into what you're saying, is teams aren't necessarily a PvP-only feature, but yes. could be, look right. to be extended to other areas. And, and importantly, too, like, what they can do of just being on a leaderboard is not is just the first thing. That, you know, like yeah. that's just the first thing we can do with teams in PvP also, right? So they're a really good, like, stepping stone and a really good, like, foundational layer for a bunch of stuff that we're going to be able to do, which is exciting. Yeah, I'm really excited um, about it. We've never had the concept of teams in PvP. We've always had, uh, you know, players claiming leaderboards individually. Yeah. Um, it's really never, never been anything to show, like, how good a certain guild or group is. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see the new levels of competition that come out from guilds that want to compete and, you know, get their guild a bit more known in those realms. Yeah. All right. Um, so that's another thing that will be talked a bit more about today on the blogs. And the last thing we're going to talk about today is going to be... Uh, we're calling guild claiming, which is a massive world versus world system, which we're incredibly excited about. And again, there'll be a blog later on today that details the thing um, fairly extensively. But we figured we'd give you guys a little sneak peek today and talk about it uh, a little bit here. What do you think? Um, I'm I'm also really excited about this. Guild claiming already exists in World vs. World today, um, but it's it's not as robust as we want it to be. So um, releasing guild halls and Heart of Thorns is giving us the opportunity to really expand and add progression there. Um, and make it more meaningful for guilds to capture objectives in World vs. World and actually hold on to them and defend them and, you know, stake their claim on them. So 
Um, a couple of examples of some of the, the awesome stuff we're bringing. Um, there are tactics and tools that uh, you're able to craft inside your war room, which is a building you can um, create in your guild hall, and also improvements. Uh, and once you do this, you're able to go into World vs. World, fight as you normally would, um, but when you capture an objective and claim it for your guild, you're now able to slot some of these tactics and tools and improvements to help you better defend. Um, for example, there's turret gates, so if you need to go and uh, be on the move, you can rest assured that there's some defenses at your gate uh, if an enemy comes. Um, there are banners uh, that are tools that you're able to create and take out onto the battlefield. Um, they have a variety of purposes. Some of them are kind of support banners. Some of them are more offensive. They're all, they're all kind of themed to one specific purpose, though, right? Yeah, like, for example, the turtle banner um, definitely will help you, you know, buff your team and keep them healed and protected. And uh, then we have, like, the dragon banner, which is super offensive and just does a ton of damage and knockbacks and cool stuff like that. So I, I know we're continually iterating on what each one of these skills do to make sure that we get the balance right on them, uh, etc. But uh, does the skills kind of scale? Like, think of a regular character weapon. Like, you've got your skills at lower cooldown left side, and you get this progressively stronger skills as you go further right on the bar. Is that how banners are going to be similarly themed? Absolutely. Um, so do you have any kind of maybe rough examples of what we might expect for, like, a five slot on a banner? Um, well, we're still kind of tweaking those. We want to make them the most awesome as possible, uh, but we also have to keep in mind that, you know, they can't be super overpowered, um, especially since it's not going to be something that you can immediately get. Mm -hmm. um, so guilds will have to, you know, work hard to, to slot these things in their um, objectives and then have them as uh, utility to bring out into the battlefield. So we're still kind of talking uh, numbers and, and playing around with a couple ideas. So. Um. I remember there was originally some conversation about have those skills having very long cooldowns just because they would be some of the most impactful skills. Is that still relatively true? Um, I think we want it to be more active gameplay, so I would expect it to be very similar to weapon skills. Um, again, we're, we're still kind of balancing sure. that stuff, but it, the purpose of it is to have um, a proactive role in... in you're not just there to carry the banner and be like, hey guys, I'm here with the banner. Like, we want people to be engaged in combat as well and um, be able to use those skills and, you know, feel really powerful and awesome. Okay. And again, those are things you can carry into battle uh, literally anywhere in Rose's world. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, like, just since we, they didn't get too much into the workshop, but this, like, ties to it so much, you basically have this scribing profession and then you create these blueprints, not blueprints, it's wrong, schematics, and, um, you place those in your queue of your workshop. And by the way, there's a queue for regular stuff, and there's a specific queue just for the world v. world stuff. And then you can, like, just be constantly building these things, these upgrades and whatever. And, uh, I mean, like, this claiming system already exists in the game. It's just really terrible. It's like that little <laughs> thing that, like, you do that does nothing when you talk to a guy. Yeah, or I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and so, they said like, the new thing is, like, it's a real system in the game, and you go and you see, like, okay, there are different tiers of upgrades, and, like, you have to hold an objective for a certain amount of time before you can place this improvement, before you can put this tactic thing down. Like, this upgrade, this objective needs to be held for, you know, some amount of time, and then you get yeah. it to that point, and it's like, okay, now we can put down the, the, the gate turrets. Like, now we, and so it's like, you, it's going to make you want to hold the stuff, which is really awesome. Yep. Um, and that's sort of the whole thing of, like, taking that system with, like, the claiming thing was supposed to be that sort of investment system and wasn't. And this is sort of the real version of it, right? So. Yeah, and I, that's, I'm going to segue off that to uh, talk about some of the really more powerful upgrades. And, again, um, as you slot these things, you need to be holding the objective uh, for, you know, periods of time to uh, have the ability to slot in some of these um, more awesome upgrades. We have uh, an airship strike that you can call down on Stone Mist that just, it's gorgeous. You can kind of see it um, at some point in the, the, well, it'll come up some, at some point in the background. Um, but it, you can call down a massive airstrike that just wipes out your enemies while you're defending Stone Mist. Um, another one I'm particularly looking forward to in Stone Mist is you may be familiar with the pools of water and the fountains in the courtyards there. Um, there will be an, an improvement that you're able to slot where if you run through that pool of water, you and your allies can be stealthed and kind of, you know, coordinate a sneak attack, which will be really neat to see how that plays out. Um, it makes me think of, in MOBAs like Dota, how you can do smoke and deceit and creep through the forest and, you know, surprise them and, and gain the advantage. So that'll be really cool to see how players use that. Um, another one I'm super excited for is the Charkar. So <laughs> Is that the official name? 
It is now. I've said it. I've said it a hundred times at E3. So it is definitely uh, no longer internal. Name. It's on. The, it's on the video here somewhere. You can see the yeah. five yeah. Charizard, Mad Max it's style, Mad Max across style. the desert. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's another tactic that you're able to slot at supply camps, uh, and it's it's literally a player transform into a super badass motorcycle that you can tear across the desert in. Uh, it has a whole skill set associated with it, um, so you can actually fight other players in it if you wanted to, but it's also essentially a mobile siege weapon, so you can roll up with your, your guild and uh, do a bunch of damage to the gate, and um, I think this is going to have really cool gameplay for smaller groups, because you get this char car and you escort them, and um, you're able to take down a gate uh, you know, really easily without having to build a flame ram, for example. Um, so we've talked a lot of defensive uh, upgrades, right? But there's also some defensive ones, things that'll help you defend offensive. your objectives better. Oh, right. you said offensive. Or you said defensive twice. He meant Did offensive. I? I meant offensive. We've been talking yeah. offensive. Well, yeah, but yeah. you're never coming unless you make me ever again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, sorry, I meant a lot of the upgrades talking about are very offensive, right? And <laughs> yeah. I want to talk a bit more about the defensive ones. We have some upgrades that are going to be built um, specifically to defend your objectives better, right? Or yep. en enabled you to do so better. Yeah, so among some of the tactics, um, they're kind of like one-use school... One, one, school. one use skills. Wow, well, you totally this messed up. All, I'm gonna, yeah. We're going to watch Let's that Let's start over. We should. Yeah. I never make any mistakes, don't worry. <laughs> uh, a one-use skill that goes on cooldown um, for a period of time, which we're still kind of balancing how long that should be. Uh, but a, an example of helping you um, be more defensive and keep your, your objectives... We have things like invulnerable gates, invulnerable walls. Um, it's essentially like fortifying your, your structure. If, not to reference MOBAs again, but if, you <laughs> are, if your base is under attack and, and you need to buy some time, you can um, fortify um, and make, make your walls and gates invulnerable for a short period of time. And Do you have any, uh, I know the numbers are still changing, but can I rough idea of what that uh, duration would be? Uh, I think it needs to be, it, it's, it's going to be difficult to balance, right? Because world versus world is... It's massive. It takes yeah. a long time to traverse uh, the areas there. So it needs to be long enough that you can call for backup and, and hopefully, you know, get people there. But it also needs to not feel bad for the people who are attacking and, like, come on, this is just invulnerable for, like, a minute. It's definitely not going to be a minute. But you see what I'm saying. We have to kind of find a, a good balance between this buys me enough time to get reinforces and not feel like, well, let's just move on to another objective because sure. they fortified it and we're not going to get in. Um, so we're kind of playing around with that, and um, we'll, we'll have more details about the actual durations and, and things. Hopefully soon, we're nailing that all down. Uh, yeah, it's a bit about like actually taking those places, ho owning them for your guild, like holding them, customizing them. Right? It's just, you know, it sort of feels like when you make when you play a board game and they add an expansion to the board game that adds a bunch of rules. Like that's what guild claiming feels like to me, right? Where it's like. This is a new set of rules for, like, how you play World v. World. Like, now all of a sudden you don't just like, take a place and, like, check a checkbox to take it. Like, you are customizing this place when you're holding it. Like, my guild is holding us, and this is what we're doing to hold it. And this is how we're making it better. And you kind of choose how you make each place better, which is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. There's there's options for all, all of these tactics improvements. So you can choose which ones you want to slot and um, at which time. So it'll, it'll add a lot of variety and... Uh, interesting strategic depth to defending uh, places in World versus World. So to uh, tie something back into a previous show that we did, this makes a lot more sense now with auto upgrades in mind. Absolutely. That whole upgrade, that whole change, makes a lot more sense now. So yep. yeah, it was for a reason. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and all that like, well, we're trying to make it better to defend. There's like some like it's not actually that. I mean, it is in some ways. This does improve defending, but really, what we're trying to do is just make World v. World more fun yep. and more engaging and like. If by the nature of that we make it more meaningful to hold places, then that is a win as well. But at the, ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about adding value to that game mode, which definitely needs some value. Yeah, so, and, and flavor. I, yeah. I mean, and flavor, yes, that's a good point. Too. There's it, The way you play World vs. World is, is usually never the same each time, um, but definitely could use some, some spice to that recipe. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so there's two specifically that I want to talk about a bit more because I think we've been... I don't know if we address them directly, but uh, talk about the, the airstrike a yeah. little bit. Uh, and if people have seen it in the videos. Yeah. I, I thought it was up earlier, but it wasn't. I was. Oh, well, it'll be up eventually. At some point um, on the on the B-roll. So like that's going to be like the ultimate defensive mechanic, right? Uh, for now, um, like John was saying, 
all of this kind of lays the foundation for us to expand upon on the f in the future. So these are, you know, core systems that we wanted to get in the game. Uh, and, and the reason that we decided to go ahead with an expansion, because um, some of these systems are just way too massive to fit into our regular release cadence. Um, so once we have this in place, there is just so much opportunity to, you know, develop more interesting and, and more rewarding um, tactics and improvements in the, in the future. All right. And uh, the other one I'll talk about real quick, I don't know if you mentioned, but Radar? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Watchtower, right? Yep, is Watchtower. That, that one is awesome also. Uh, so at Towers, there's um, a tactic that you can slot. Stop moving your mic. Sorry, <laughs> I'm fidgeting. Uh, uh, you can slot this at towers, and it essentially turns your tower into a giant sentry. So as enemies pass, you and all your allies can see it on the map. So you can kind of spot big zergs um, and then make your plans to cut them off. So that'll be really cool. That's gonna, um, I think that's going to change gameplay a lot. Uh, what objective is that available on? Okay. Yeah, watch tower. Watch tower. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I just want to, it's for clarification. And, and the whole, like, flow of this, just since, since we sort of talked about it, but it's not super clear, like, have a guild, have a guild hall, like, upgrade your uh, war room to have these types of upgrades, go to your workshop, like, and have a scribe who builds the schematics for these, like, get them in your queue, build them, and, like, then you consume it, right? Like, you use your airstrike, and then, like, you queue up another one, and your guild builds up an inventory of these things that they can use and spend at places that they... So it's kind of this constant loop of, like, getting stuff for your guild, building the stuff in your guild hall, going out into World v. World, like, using it, mm -hmm. and kind of keeping that cycle going, which is super important. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Any, uh, any closing remarks on... Any of the World vs. World upgrade system or the uh, guild claiming system that's going in? Um, just, just to reiterate, I, I'm personally very excited about it. I think uh, guild claiming needed needed some love for a long time, and I'm super stoked that we're finally yeah. able it to is, do it. It some is justice. not. If you compared the current version with what's coming out, like yeah. you wouldn't even think they're related. Yes, yep. they are not. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a guild claiming remark, but uh, someone said it in the chat, so I'll say it, which is like, for um, the guild teams, like one of the awesome things that is in, by the way, there are a bunch of blogs with all this info, more info about this stuff coming out. Maybe today. It's, soon. Maybe it's oh, out it already. Uh, it'll be this, sometime, this afternoon. Sometime, sometime today on the website. And uh, there's a thing that someone asked about, which is like, yeah, you can get like a guild anthem, and then you can oh, have your yeah. guild anthem play when you win a ba yep. uh, battle in... Uh, there will be perks PvP. associated with yep. uh, victories that you yeah. have when you're you know, pl representing your guild team. Yeah. Yep. So, it's awesome. All right, All right cool. Uh, well, as John said, there will be more information um, on these features we talked a little bit about today coming out on the GuildWars2.com blog today, um, roughly in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Um, so definitely check those out when they come out. There's a bit more detail. Obviously, blogs are pretty good at giving like the first rundown of how something's going to work. Yep. Um, but anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the presentation today. Uh, again, big thanks to Mr. John Peters here hey, for coming on. Pleasure. <laughs> and uh, Jessica as well. My pleasure. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, we'll catch you next time. Uh, don't forget the June 23rd release comes out. Well, obviously the June 23rd release will come out on June 23rd. But the big specializations <laughs> revamp that John also worked on quite a bit comes out next Tuesday. So definitely jump in and uh, check that out. It'll also yeah, be... Uh, that's in four days. So. <laughs> so that's a thing. Is that stress that I'm seeing? No, it's fine. <laughs> um, also, uh, the uh, Lion's Arch stuff, apparently, yeah. is, uh, is a thing, too. So. Yeah. Yep. It's an exciting build. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's going to blow your guys' minds. Anyways, uh, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll catch you next time. Yeah. Thanks for watching.